Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Sounds Like a Drum. My name is Ben, and this week we're gonna be covering how to get an electro snare sound without adding all sorts of things on top of your drum or having to do all that effect work in post-production. So this is a trick that I stumbled upon when I was working for Evans Drum Heads and I was experimenting with all sorts of different combinations of heads and moving things around and trying different tunings and trying a lot of unconventional things. That was probably one of my favorite aspects of working at Evans was getting to just experiment and go outside the box and break things and, and try different combinations of materials and then try different uses for existing products. So one of the things that I stumbled upon was using a marching drum head on a drum set snare. Now you've probably seen this done with the Evans Hybrid Gray marching snare drum head and they created a version specifically for drum set snares that has a light coating on the top of it and has a slightly different makeup but same basic material. Now that's a cool drum head and I dig that for certain sounds and we'll talk about that in a future episode but the head that I actually found that works the best for this kind of electronic snare sound particularly in the higher register is not a snare batter but rather the snare side hits. So what I did was I took the Evans MX-5 snare side head, which is originally designed for the bottoms of high tension marching snare drums, and I put it on top of my vintage Ludwig Superphonic. And I, first off, I would not recommend necessarily doing this with wooden drums. Part of it is just because that's not necessarily the tone that I think that this really fits the best. You know, that's gonna get a little bit more of a warmer sound. And then secondly, I don't think that it's such a great idea to put fiber-based heads on wooden drums. This drum head has an overtone control ring around the outside on the underside of the head that technically speaking could protect the bearing edge from those fibers and they're really they're fine fibers it's really little pieces of material and it's technically speaking it's kevlar it's it's an aramid fiber high tensile strength and I just kind of worry about that cutting into the bearing edge of certain drums, particularly if they've got a sharper bearing edge. I've seen that happen with the hybrid snare side heads, even on marching drums, and it's not good. You end up having to have the, the bearing edges recut no fun at all. I like using this head on metal snare drums and particularly on the Superphonic. I have had a blast experimenting with it on all kinds of different drums. And this drum is really where I've kind of settled in terms of sound. Now, oftentimes for like that breakbeat electronic snare drum sound, you'll see people just absolutely cranking the heck out of whatever head they have on their drum. And that gets you partway there, but it also tends to leave you with really pingy, resonant overtones, more of like a reggae kind of snare drum sound or a ska kind of thing. And what I love about this snare drum head is that it's actually kind of dark in the overall tonality. And some of that is because of the fibrous makeup as opposed to just using polyester film. And some of that is because of the overtone control ring around the outside that helps muffle that resonance and, and shorten the sustain. So you end up with a very short articulate sound. And I really dig this. I think it sounds incredible. Um, the rim shots are ear piercing. Um, the playing in the center is actually a little softer than you might expect in terms of the volume, but I think that it blends really nicely. And having experimented with different miking setups and throwing a mic close on it and then trying it even just with a room mic, I'm pretty impressed with it overall. I do have to note that I leave the snare wires a little bit looser than usual. But rather than continue to keep describing this thing, let me give you a little bit of a demo so you can hear how it sounds, and then I'll play it in context later on. <laughs> 
you can hear this thing has a very distinct sound of its own. And again, I just think that this is befitting specifically for that electro snare sound that I like to go for. And I don't use this all the time, but it's fun to mess around with. And I have a feeling that this is going to spur some, some debate and conversation about this, particularly because I've never seen anyone else use this particular head on this drum. Well, actually, I've never seen anyone use this snare side head on the batter side of a drum. So I'm very curious to hear what other people think about it. Please do let us know what you think. Leave a comment down below. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get more tips, tricks, and tutorials like this in the future. Now, as far as tuning for this drum, I do have it cranked relatively high. And one important thing with these heads is to make sure that they're balanced in terms of tension all the way around and to balance it on your way up. So for tuning, rather than knowing that I was gonna tune it up high and going you know, a half turn or even a full turn at a time, I went up starting in eighth turns and then went to quarter turns just going very slowly and in a star pattern because with this fibrous material, there is a cross grain direction to it where it's weakest and you don't want to stretch it too far along those lines. I've seen these heads just rip apart. Now that was under marching tensions, but at the same time, it's not all too dissimilar from the tension that we're putting on it right now because it's the snare side head. They don't crank the snare side heads quite the same way as they do the batter heads with marching snare drums. Because I'm sure it's going to come up in comments and people are going to ask about this and there's the reference to different material names and things like that. This is actually a Kevlar material. It is the brand name Kevlar. And it's an aramid fiber, which basically means that it's a high tensile strength fiber. And there are all sorts of different drum heads out on the market. Evans has some other heads. Of course, Remo has heads. I don't know if Aquarian does. I think maybe they do. I just haven't really heard anything about their marching heads recently. Um, but this is a really cool head for the batter side of drum set snare drums. If you want to experiment with something that's like really controlled, but has that like just pingy poppy pitch to it. And you could hear that specifically when I played it without the snares on, just what kind of a response. It's very different from a traditional drum head. Another important thing to keep in mind with this sound is that the snare wires need to be present. And so I tend to loosen them up a little bit more than I normally would if I were just playing on a, a standard drum head, whatever that may be. If it was a G1 or a G12 or a UV1, I like to have a little bit more snare response because this head does sound kind of choked. And so I want there to be that snare presence on the bottom side. Given a recording scenario, I would almost definitely put a snare side mic on it to be able to blend in a little bit more of that snare response. Now, something to keep in mind though, is that when you're playing things that are faster in terms of like, if you're playing buzz rolls on this, that snare response, that looseness will become that much more present. You'll hear that those snares are a lot more loose than usual, specifically because you're exciting that snare side head for a longer period of time, a longer duration. So as a result, you may want to tweak the amount of tension, and luckily that's just as simple as a couple of turns on the snare strainer mechanism, just to be able to get it dialed into where you want it for a given tune or whatever it may be. Now, what's another reason why this head in particular works so well for this sound? Part of it is because it's thin. There's not a lot of mass to it. In fact, when the head's not on the drum, it has some wrinkles to it. The material is pretty free flowing. And I find that this is better for that higher pitch, similar to what like pipe band drummers get out of their heads versus the traditional marching world where they're cranked, but they're also, they're thicker, they're super durable heads because they have to be able to withstand really heavy playing from really large sticks. And part of that is because in those environments, you need that projection. You've got, you know, up to 12, sometimes even 14 drummers out on the field that need to have that projection of sound where it's just like in your face, super loud, super present and super articulate. And they're playing with huge sticks and they're hitting really, really hard. 
in the pipe band world, they're playing with much lighter sticks and they're not hitting very hard at all. But that sound transfers in a very different way. And so I tend to think that this head works really well in recreating that. You know, we tend to think of that marching snare drum sound and associate it with the electronic snare drum sound, or at least I think that some of that came about when we saw those videos of Jojo Mayer experimenting with different aramid fiber heads and also that Remo tunable sound source practice pad that uh, just creates such a unique sound. Um, I think that. Personally, this head works best for me in terms of the sound that I'm looking for. And I'd recommend that you try it on your drums. Experiment with it. You know, you might find that it works really well on some deeper drums, or maybe you want to use it on more of like a piccolo or a pancake snare drum. Just experiment with these things. The nice thing about these heads in particular is that you can crank them up and you can take them off the drum and put them on another drum. They're pretty resilient. And part of that is just because of, again, the material, even though it has a collar kind of formed into it, it's going to be able to flex around a variety of different bearing edges. Again, I can't stress this enough. I really strongly recommend using this only on metal drums. We can't be held responsible if you do this on, I mean, we can't be held responsible for any issues that you may have, but please, please don't use this on a wooden drum and crank it up there and then find that you've gotten like issues with the fibers cutting into the bearing edge. I don't necessarily think that that's going to happen, but consider yourself warned. Another thing to keep in mind, because we're talking about higher tensions and I'm sure it's gonna come up in the comments is, you know, are you going to hurt your drum? I've definitely seen plenty of people take marching batter heads and put them on drum set snare drums and crank them way too high and strip out their hardware or even crush their shell. I've seen all kinds of things with like lugs getting pulled off and it's a real nasty scenario. And if you're applying a ton of tension, then yeah, that might happen. You gotta be careful. So use some common sense. If you're like really wrenching that head down in order to get it up to that pitch you're looking for, that's probably a little too far. So experiment with things. You can experiment with the snare side. I use the same approach that we demonstrated in a previous video. Cody went through the process of balancing the height of the snare side hoop in order to match the contour of the snare side of the shell, particularly with regards to the snare bed. So I used that same process and I'd say I brought the snare side up just a little bit higher than usual again, to be able to help with the response and also to be able to lift the pitch just a little bit more too. So you can hear how that works into the overall sound. I do recommend that if you're going to try this out, that you use it on at least an eight lug drum. Really best results seem to be on a 10 lug drum. And again, you can watch our previous video comparing different lug counts and how that affects the drum to better understand that. But the short story is that having more lugs is gonna mean that you can apply less tension per individual lug in order to get a higher tension out of the overall drum head. So you get more bang for your buck out of in smaller turns. I think that that does a much better job of tuning this head and helps you balance that out in order to get a better overall sound while also protecting your drum and, and displacing that tension across the entirety of the drum rather than a smaller lug count. I do want to make sure that you get to hear this in the context of the kit. So here's just a little quick demo where you hear bass drum, snare drum, and hi-hat uh, just experimenting and improvising with some stuff with this particular snare sound. Man, I can't say enough about this. It's a blast to play this head. It's a very different type of drum head, a very different sound. I would not use this for anything else, but it's just a really cool effect, and I like doing it rather than having to play stuff on top. Though you could place jingles and things like that if you wanted to get a little bit of an additional, like, distorted or kind of jangly sound to it. Of course, 
Please do subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up down below and leave a comment for us. Let us know if you've tried other things, what your approach is for getting an electronic snare drum sound, and if you've ever tried this particular setup in order to get your sound. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.